Anyways, I'd like to just jump right into it, but this is a story that probably needs a considerable amount of um, setup for it, and admittedly I'm not going to get into specifics, so if that's what you're hoping for, sorry, not gonna happen. I had... so... Uh, about... let me think, it would have been six and a half months ago at this point? Maybe seven? I had just graduated from college and moved down to Florida for a job in the area. Um, and this I can be specific about, I'm teaching kids how to code and, you know, I love it. It's a fantastic job and I certainly wouldn't, well, I'd say I wouldn't trade it for anything, but I suppose that's not completely true. There's nothing else I'd really rather be doing uh, professionally. It's really something I quite enjoy and I'd probably, even if I wasn't getting paid for it, and I don't tell my boss this, I'd probably still do it from time to time just as a hobby. But after uh, I moved down to uh, Florida, you know, I was uh, going to really make sure that I was taking advantage of all the opportunities in the area, and I took all the proper steps to go ahead and make sure that I was, I had a foundation, you know, I really wanted to build a life for myself. And as a result of that, I wound up not really having much time for things outside of work and what I was actually trying to build for myself. The problem ultimately arose as I'd say the initial problem was I was really happy. I... everything in my life seemed like it was going exactly where I wanted it to. I despised my time in college. But I was able to manage it, I was able to deal with it just because I knew that it was for something. And, you know, I, I actually liked that I didn't have any free time. I enjoyed what I was investing my time into, and it seemed like it was actually building towards something. Come, and I remember the exact date, June 13th. And from that day, the illusion was completely shattered. I found out that everyone that I had thought that was close to me had been using me. And that proved a considerable problem with the community I had in the area, as if If I had not been very close with uh, one of the people in the community, I probably would have actually gotten a fair shake, but that was never going to happen. And from that point on, you know, my home life, you know, my, my work was getting a lot more stressful, my home life turn for the worse, and it's just gotten to the point where the only thing left in my life that uh, I had pre, uh, let's say, September 10th or so, well, no, let, I'd say even to the day, but, you know, it had been at July that I had nothing left in my life that I had cared about outside of my job. And I do still love my job, so I suppose the grass is always greener in that department, but it's pretty damn sucky when the only thing that's keeping you going is a moral obligation to do so, and the reason I'm giving all that build up to the title of video, why I haven't uploaded as I think I mentioned my achieving excellence with Chai Slosher, that, you know, it's something I did want to bring back, it's something that 
I enjoyed doing. It was a nice hobby, a nice side project. And now that I suddenly have a bunch of free time due to it not being consumed by other things, I wanted to... I wanted to get back into Splatoon, you know, the game was coming out on my birthday, and I wanted to dive back into it. And originally I was planning on just doing it on my own, I didn't have any intention to rejoining Cephal Squad. But when, when I lost everything, And, uh, I didn't want to rejoin. I thought it would, you know, nothing, nothing that they had done to me could or could do to me would really could have been worse than what I had already been going through. And only to find out that, yeah, now big surprise, I had been lied to in that department too. Has still pisses me off. But perhaps I shouldn't go into too much detail there. But you know, turns out I was lied to again, and you know, the, the open invitation that I was told there was wasn't there. And salt on the wound was it came out on my freaking birthday, and that was one of the worst days in my life. And it, it just got to the point where, you know, I want to be able to enjoy Splatoon, but I think after all I've been through, my just taste for life has changed. And I'm not going to say that, you know, it was better before this all went down. My... Because I don't think it was better before it all went down, but I was at least numb to the pain. I believe it was a... It, I, I don't remember what author it was, it's probably not an uncommon either quote or sentiment or proverb, whatever you want to call it, shared, but you know. A man really needs something to fight for in his life, and if he doesn't have that, then ultimately it's whatever you need something to keep yourself going forward, you know, whether, and this is part of the reason that a lot of people turn to some form of escape, whether it's extreme forms like drugs and alcohol, or whether it's something mild, like, you know, just playing video games or binge watching TV, you know. Things that ultimately, in doses, in small doses, are perfectly healthy, but in excessive quantities, it's really just not something that you. that, that anyone should be doing, and I think that this is slowly becoming less stigmatized to say, where a lot of us are addicted to social media or. Netflix, or, well, I mean, Netflix is probably a bad example. Some just binge-watching TV shows, as it's just very easily accessible, and just there's a void of purpose left. And I... What's a good way to phrase it? I had that purpose fulfilled, only to find out that it had been based upon a lie, and then soon to be stabbed in the back again by someone very close to you. I want to go- I'd love to go back to how I was before I was even just truly happy and fulfilled. Not because I think that was a good state of being, but it certainly- it certainly beats the unbelievable nightmare of 
just having nothing keeping you going other than a moral obligation to do so. And what I'm sort of spending a long time trying to say is, I wanted Sword of Splatoon to be that as the... on July 4th when I actually uploaded my Splatoon video, uh, where it was carrying the new and Splatoon you. Very good friend of mine, uh, and thankfully he's still been a friend to this day, and, you know... That was something that I thought, you know, I'd be able to throw myself into and find meaning and purpose in, just because it was something I enjoyed doing, it took up my time, and... It, I thought it might get me somewhere, but... Now, I... Just even four months after the fact, I am constantly reminded by the unbelievable betrayal I've gone through again and again and again. I have to drive two hours back up to Savannah to have any semblance of community. And it certainly beats nothing, but. There's just not really a solution to place I'm at right now, and I think eventually it will get better, but I don't think that that's going to happen anytime soon, and I'd have been able to deal with all of the things that happened to me if I just had a reason to do so. That's how I was in college. There was a teacher there who I thought would like, legitimately try and get me expelled. And I played the game, you know, I moved the, uh, I, I moved the dice, I... I did what I needed to do, you know, without actually violating my principles, but of course, no good deed goes unpunished. But, you know what? I got away with it. Well, I shouldn't say get away with it. I made it out alive. And that was a continual push that I was constantly going through. You know, it didn't matter how big or how small the challenge was going to overcome it to actually achieve my dreams, and that was that weird kid where, you know, I, I never had, I never had sort of thoughts of grandeur where it's like, you know, oh, I want to be famous, you know, well, I, on some level, you know, those things appeal to me, I'm not going to pretend that wealth and fame weren't things that on some level I desired, but, you know, it wasn't just sort of, if there was one thing you could have in your life, you know, what was this? But, you know, it, it, my answer that wasn't a specific career, a specific... A, a specific amount of fame, a specific amount of wealth. It was always, you know, I want to be a husband and a father. And it's just... Uh, I sort of lost my vision of that. And... I'm not sure how much of that is... attributable to my current mental illness, and... I'm working with a psychologist, I'm... I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder growing up. My current psychologist thinks that might have been a misdiagnosis. And I'm not convinced that uh, he's wrong or right. I still need to see how things go. But my... So... So... Uh, 
let me wrap this up because, you know, and I'm sure when you clicked on the video, you probably figured that it would be less tractor handling, but I want to be able to enjoy Splatoon 3. But I really don't have any capacity to enjoy anything. I have not experienced real true joy since early July when, funnily enough, you know, the guy that I did the uh, Killing a Noob in Splatoon 2 video with, he actually traveled, you know, he visited Florida and, you know, that was the last little bit of joy I had, and, you know, until I'm actually able to enjoy things again, I'm really not going to be able to bring myself to make Splatoon 3 videos or even really play the game. I mean, I don't really have many people to play with outside of my coworkers and a couple of my college buddies on occasion. But. It's just aggravating. I did things the right way. I walked the straight and narrow. I went to helping hand out when people needed it. And I was just stabbed in the back repeatedly. And on a certain amount, you know, I take responsibility for it. I should have known better. I should have known better. But, you know, it's... If a sleazy car salesman gives you a horrible deal, it is your fault. You should have done your due diligence and make sure that the car was actually taken care of, that it actually, you know, read the fine print, uh, actually read through your contract. And that peeve of mine where, look, if it's your just iTunes license agreement, I understand just not reading that. But if it's like a lease for an apartment or a car or something actually major, Yes, you should read that line by line. Sorry, it, no excuses, but you know, a whole other thing. But you know, two things are true at once. I take responsibility for letting people take advantage of me. I I trusted these people with my life. Well, with the exception of my the Splatoon team. I didn't trust them uh, as far as I can throw a uh, basketball but yeah. Which is not very far. But you make choices of, in your life of who you trust and clearly I made the wrong choice and no good deed goes unpunished. That's been my Discord profile for quite a while, but it... <sighs> Just sucks. An apology would go would have gone a very long way. You know what? And an actual apology, not I'm sorry for everything. That doesn't mean anything. An actual recognition of what you did wrong. And what you're going to do to make up for it. It's what I do when I wrong someone. But I... I guess that's the penalty of actually trying to be a good person. So, I already let this video go far, far longer than I intended to. So I think I'll just sort of end it here and say, you know, if I start uploading again, it's good news for me. If not, it could potentially be good news and I'm just doing other things that actually make me happy. But knowing my luck, it's probably just more bad news. God, I would have taken two more comas over the summer I've had. But, you know, 
That's my life for you. If I could spend a little more wisdom before I go. I would probably sum up how I could avoid it everything by just sort of saying... Don't trust anyone who doesn't have any skin in the game. If they don't have anything to lose, they're going to slit your throat when... <laughs> you know, slit your throat the moment the going gets tough. And they'll have their reasons or excuses for doing so. But don't give them the attack vector. I think it was Elon Musk who did that, or mentioned something somewhere when he was talking to Joe Rogan about why he was now living a pretty sort of middle of the road American lifestyle. Um, not sure if he's still doing that, but he at the time mentioned that he was basically selling everything that he, well, it obviously not like a stock. It, it's a horrible financial decision. But, you know, when he just looks sort of things like his house. Lifestyle, stuff like that. But, you know, it is what it is. I hope you guys take care.